Hello everybody. Figured it's about time for an update. Christmas is here and trees up, decorations are out. Um, wanted to give an update specifically on this new Pixel controller. I kind of alluded to it in an earlier video. Um, said I would do one just dedicated to this unit. Um, so that's what this is. This is the uh, Ethercon Gateway P12R from Joshua One Systems. Um, it's an E131 based uh, pixel controller. So I'm going to kind of walk through what this board is, how it works. Um, to begin with, uh, it has two banks on the board, a left side and a right side. Um, each side has its own uh, voltage input, so you can run um, say 5 volt here and 12 volt here or 12 volt here and 24 volt here or you know whatever you want um, I've got it wired up to my pigtails because that's kind of what I use for everything so I'm gonna plug it into just a regular this is my my bench top this is my testing uh, power supply here Let me get these to go together with one hand while I'm holding my camera go okay so go ahead and click this on um, this is running 12 volts out and you can see um, in this case this board uh, there were lit up this board has an onboard voltage regulator um, it needs at least 5 volts to run you can either supply 5 volts uh, right here on the screw terminals um, or the way this works is with uh, these little jumper wires. Um, pin 1 and 2 is taking the, the po uh, power that I'm feeding the bank up here on top, um, and that's feeding it back into the voltage regulator. Then coming out of that is our 5 volt that we need to run the board and then uh, running back in. So instead of running with a, a separate 5 volt supply just to run the electronics on the board, this has a, an onboard voltage regulator, so just by using the, the jumper wires, I can now use the same power uh, that I use to, to run my pixels to also run the board. Um, here you can see this is the Cat5 cable. Again, this is an Ethernet-based controller, so um, this Cat5, I'm running back just a loop here uh, directly into the, the network card on my laptop. Um, and in this case, uh, I've got the, the onboard diagnostic running. That's just what's cycling through red, green, blue, red, green, blue. Um, that's what these dip switches uh, are for here. Uh, some of these are for addressing, but uh, switch number four going up is that onboard um, diagnostic sequence. I'm going to turn that off. Um, anytime we make a setting change to the board, we have to reset it, and that's what this little button here is, is the reset button. So I push that, you see the, the lights on the side kind of cycle around, and as it comes back up, we should get everything to turn off. There we go. So that's the way we're set up. Um, again, the board has these uh, four pin sockets. Uh, they got little screw terminals in them, so you can mix and match, change stuff around. I happen to have all these wired up here um, for things that I've been tinkering with and working on. Um, so I want to show kind of how the board is set up. Um, because it's an Ethernet controller, uh, and this is the thing I really like about this uh, Joshua One Systems, if I go into my computer and I'm going to type in the IP address, uh, the default on these is 10, 10, 10, 10. That pulls up uh, the screen, and you can see that this is, you know, very easy to use user interface as the ECG P12R on the right hand side. This is the main page, which gives me all the configuration. Um, there's lots of little features on this. <laughs> system information, uh, you know, when the controller was built, how many hours it's been running, um, things like that. Uh, different statistics, just information about it, um, what port I'm on, etc. Um, there are 
two different tabs here for configuration. So if I type in the default uh, username is admin and there's no password. And this gives me the uh, string configuration. Um, so you can see it's listed uh, by the outputs going down the board here. We have uh, 1 through 12. Um, you have the option to activate it. Uh, it's whether or not we're using it. In this case, I'm only using 6 of the 12 available. Um, you can see I have those programmed for 2801 pixels, but this will support 6803s, uh, the 1804, 1809, and the TLS 3001s. Um, I believe that there's now also support for the 2811 um, that works under this uh, 180X. Um, but that, that'll probably be added uh, as an official later, in the, uh, later this year. Um, you can see you can set different speeds uh, for the different pixels that are there. You assign which universe uh, they're on, um, what pixel we want to start them at. So we can actually run, you know, say 1 through 50 on this output and 51 through uh, 170 on this output. So you can break uh, universes over the, sing over the same uh, or share universes over two, two outputs. Um, and then the number of, of pixels that are on each output is also here. Um, if we come into the effect tab, you can see we have a lot more options. Um, so in this case, right here, uh, just under output number one, we have four different setups that we can, can assign. Um, so we just have to select which one we want to activate. Um, so if I, if I go down to the bottom here, um, output number 12 is configured for my pixel sign. You can see we have 162 pixels. I'm starting with pixel 1. Um, another common complaint with these pixels is that a lot of them tend not to go RGB order. Uh, in the case of my sign, they're BRG order. In this case, the controller allows us to correct that. So we're not renumbering hundreds or thousands of channels in LOR or some other software. Um, the unchecked boxes that you see there, if I scroll back up to the top, you can see the menus. Um, we have the ability to reverse a string so that the beginning of the string is on the far end instead of the near end. Um, a null count for those of you that are familiar with pixels uh, and the way the signal is repeated, we have a limited amount of distance that that signal can be sent unless you're using a pixel extender, um, which I'll, I'll talk about later. Um, and then the repeat count, uh, which kind of allows you to run a, an intelligent string like a dumb string. Um, so in this case, I'm not using either of those for the sign setup or for the CCRs or, or the CCR lookalikes. Um, but those are all uh, functions inside of this controller. Uh, then we can also set a new IP address. Uh, what I have set here is just basically the, the default. Um, we also have the ability, uh, if for some reason we can't connect to this over IP, um, if we've enabled the UBL, UBL stands for Universal Bootloader. Um, the controller itself has a small uh, USB connector on it, so I can actually, uh, using a, a bootloader software, um, connect to this to uh, update or, or change configurations. Um, we can actually save the XML output. Uh, so if we ever have a setting you know, set up for a show, uh, say at, at you know this time of year, we can export this and save it. Um, and then as we tinker with stuff or make changes over the year, um, you know you can go in and individually tweak each one of those outputs. But when it comes time for a show again, you can re-import this um, and save it, uh, submit it, and it will reset all of your settings just how you had them before. And then we can also reboot here um, from the uh, computer <coughs> rather than having to hit the little button down here to reset. So what that means is while this is sitting out in your yard under four feet of snow, um, if you'd want to make any changes to it, uh, you can do so right from your computer um, and not, not ever have to go back outside. So 
really neat um, neat user interface, very easy to understand, very easy to use, and that's what I liked about this.